now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from the east coast of the United States. Out to California we do go. And of course the uh, wonderful strains of L- Larry Brown and his orchestra. <laughs> Not to be confused with Phil Spatoni. Uh, yeah, Phil. Uh, Phil <laughs> and it's all girl. It was an all girl orchestra, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I can get with an all-girl orchestra. I mean, I understand girls, uh, women, who, it should have been the all-women orchestra, but it was called the all-girl orchestra. And I could see them on violins, you know. But when it comes to a trombone, <laughs> I mean, women just don't look right playing the trombone, do they? I don't think so. No. Unless it's a rusty trombone. Uh, in which case, it's a whole different deal. Uh, but they called them an all-girl orchestra. That would not be considered right today, right? That would be very sexist, I would think. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, the first music videos were actually, from what I can tell, were the acts of the big bands from the 30s. Well, there was a thing called, uh, what were they called now? Um, I, in fact, I have some uh, songies or something like that, and they were run in film jukeboxes. You could actually put money in this jukebox, and you could say, uh, "Oh, I'm going to play Phil Spitalny and his All Girl Orchestra," and then the film would come up. Really, I've yeah. never heard of it. Soundies. That's what they were called. Soundies, uh, if I remember correctly. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have quite a few of them, actually. And they were a, they were a great, uh, what could we call it, uh, repository <clears throat> for a history of music in that time. Because we didn't have a lot of uh, video. We didn't have video in those days. We didn't have a lot of film on uh, some of these big bands. But they did these soundies, so we do. And it was very un- unusual, you know. Uh, but I remember seeing soundies from just every every big performer of the time, you know. And you would go into a place, and you would play these things, and they would run. And then there was something in the uh, in the in the fifties or sixties, maybe, that came along that was a little more the same kind of thing, but a more technologically proficient version of the same thing. And then they all but disappeared. You would think they would exist today, that you could go into a bar and play videos of, uh, yeah, of today's performance. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, maybe better. those might be worth something, your originals. Well, I'm, I, I had them just on video. I, I downloaded them at some point. Or somebody like Shecky gave me a copy of them. Let me just look this up here. Soundies. Okay, let's see if I'm right on the name here. Uh, soundies, yeah, here they are. Three-minute uh, American musical films produced between 1940 and 1947, each displaying a song, dance, and or band or orchestral number produced professionally on 35-millimeter black-and-white film like theatrical yeah. motion pictures, and they were printed in the more portable and economical 16-millimeter gauge. And then it has a whole bunch of videos of Soundies here. But uh, including a documentary called "Soundies: A Musical History," so they, yeah, that's that, great. That's what we that's what we had. Prior to that, though, I don't think there was anything like that. You know, um, do you, do you you don't remember? I remember certain jukeboxes that you probably don't remember. I remember there was a jukebox that was linked to kind of some kind of central person or something, and you talked to them and said, I would like to hear blah, blah, blah. And then the guy, I guess, would go through tons of like records he had, or 78, <laughs> and he would play the record into the jukebox. Uh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, that lasted, I think, a pretty short time. But I remember it. I definitely remember seeing them. 
going into a bar and there was a place where you could just go and talk to the guy. I thought that was amazing. That, when I was a kid, that was the technological nadir of our of our existence at that time. Uh, and I, uh, I, I, you know, God, do I feel old. <laughs> you just wonder how much money got skimmed off that from the uh, performers. <laughs> oh, the performers probably got next to nothing. Performers in those days got ripped off, especially the black performers. Yeah. That's why... Chuck Berry, whenever he would play a venue, he would require that the money be in cash and that he get paid that cash before he went on stage. And when he went on stage, that cash was in his back pocket. Well, that was smart. Yeah. Because black artists just got so ripped off by everybody. I mean, by, from the record companies down to the venues uh, and... Uh, you know, when you talk about music in those days, I mean, it was largely run by the mob, you know. And uh, the mob always took advantage of black people. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not saying something I shouldn't. I won't get killed for saying it. But, <laughs> but at my age, you're just shortening my life by a few years, you know. Yeah. So go ahead, kill me. So how have you been feeling, my dear friend? I've been, uh, well, I've been watching a, uh, speaking about performers got ripped off, but there's this show, I think it's like three or four years old, they do autopsies of famous celebrity people. And, uh, what? Yeah, they or they talk about the autopsy of the famous people, and uh, they had Elvis. Uh, Elvis was only 42 when he died. Right? Yeah, he died, uh, he died uh, uh, on the toilet. <laughs> yes. As I read that uh, many EMTs have told me the majority of people that die in apartments are on toilets because uh, they uh, get constipated and strain and blow a vein in their head. Really? Yeah. I better not strain then. You don't strain. But, uh, but the majority of deaths are in... It's the only you would have information. Well, that's what, that. that's what some EMT told me. He said the majority of people we find are like dead in apartments. It's, they're on the toilet and... Wow. Had a hemorrhage. Huh. Well, I mean, uh, uh, Lenny Bruce died on the toilet. Mm -hmm. Okay, Or in the bathroom. Elvis Elvis. died in the bathroom. Well, who was it? Was it, was it uh, William Holden? Who was it that uh, cracked his head open on a coffee table? William killed? Holden, the, uh, November 81. Jeez almighty, you remember that. Do you remember the day? It was a Saturday, so it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. It was a Saturday night. It was about these. It was in, within a week or two of this. It was the same month that uh, Natalie uh, Wood fell off the boat. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, we had. Uh, he he died. Supposedly, he was drunk. Maybe. He was drunk, uh, stripped, and hit his head, and I think he bled to death. Yeah, he passed, was passed out and and bled to death because I guess there was nobody there or something. Call yeah. call the EMTs or uh -huh. whatever. Wow, that's interesting. You know, I mean, I you know, I think it was a big joke back then that they were coming out with a new product called the uh, William Holden drinking helmet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, geez, that's forty. As my first year of comedy, that was forty years ago. You know what I love? You and I are talking about these things, and we're talking about them casually. William Holden, when did he die? You told me when he died. You know, if we have a person who's like forty years old listening to us right now, they don't even know who William Holden is. Do you realize that? Yeah. I mean, we make references to stuff that we think was just yesterday, and it wasn't just yesterday. Um. Uh, I what what I what was I seeing that I saw that something happened in the year uh, you know 1992, and I'm going oh that was it but yeah I remember that that was just yesterday no it wasn't it was almost 30 years ago yeah you know uh, passage of time is very scary it it gets even more scary when the older you get how old are you now uh, 65 66 68 68 oh okay yeah. you're you're getting into that death zone. Uh, definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the death zone. Do you have, you have, I never, never ask you this, do you, you have a fear of death? Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a, just, it, gets, hmm? it gets, 
it gets as you get older though you realize there's so much you start to feel pains and shit and you just realize that you're not going to miss that much so. well I, but yet i just you know i i never could deal with the idea of death because i can't deal with the idea of not existing it's not existence that's it yeah that that drives me crazy you know like what is it like what it was what is it like to not exist i guess it isn't like anything because you're not sentient when you're not existing but then again who knows you know i mean i don't want to be a spiritual person here and i'm not in fact i'm jealous of people who believe in a god and when they die they're going to a god because they have an they have an answer i don't I just see a void, nothing, zero, zilch. Mm-hmm. It was like before I was born. That's what my father said to me once. He said, don't worry about dying. It's like before you were born. And then I started worrying about what it was like before I was born. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 what he said to me when I had this fear of death, he said, we've all been there before. And he's right. You know, He's right. I mean, what, let me ask you this. What is the first sentient memory that you have? You know, On I mean, this planet, uh, I think I was about three years old. The uh, family dog bit me. <laughs> I always, when I ask people this question, it's always something like I fell down a flight of stairs or my dog bit me. But before that, you don't remember anything. In other words, you don't remember. No, I don't remember the first two years at all. I mean, does anybody remember coming out of the womb? Uh, They say, I I think if they, if you get uh, hypnosis, supposedly you can, but. uh... Wow. Coming out of my mother's pussy? Oh, my God. (laughs) Ugh. So uh, the first thing we remember is something, something that hurt us, a oh, dog bite us. I remember my first real memory was about five, and I almost drowned. And I remember having bubbles all over my face, or it felt like I had bubbles all over my face. And that's Where was the, that? Uh, that was in, uh, up, in, uh, up, up north of San Francisco, a uh, big uh, lake up there. Uh, uh, oh, boy. I'm trying to... Really? Clear Lake. It may be Clear Lake. may have been Clear Lake, yeah. My father was playing up there with a band. Oh, yeah, there was a, there was a big uh, uh, venue up there. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, um, and I, uh, I, all I remember is I don't remember drowning. I just remember them reviving me and me feeling like I had bubbles all over my face. And that's my first real memory. And then maybe I, maybe it's, there is a slight memory that I have of a uh, of a blackout in San Francisco. These folks, they used to have blackouts. They used to just have everybody turn off their lights because then enemy planes couldn't see the city. And I remember, I think an air raid when they when they everybody turned off their lights. That I, that I seem to remember and I remember looking out our window on Telegraph Hill and seeing nothing. But, but I don't know what age that was. It would have had to have been before 1945, right? Yeah, you're, you're five or six. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I would have been about five years old when, I, when that happened, or four. Five, I think, when I almost drowned. And then I start slowly remembering little things and so on and so forth, you know. And then, of course, by the time I get into grade school, I start remembering that vividly. And uh, high school and so on. Um, well, do you have a fear of water because of the drowning? No, drowning? no. I mean, I didn't swim for years. And then one day my father got sick and tired of me not swimming and just threw me in a pool. Jeez. And I, I panicked and then I started paddling my hands. And then I saw that I could get to the edge of the pool. And after that, you couldn't keep me out of, out of the water. I was just always <laughs> loved Yeah, I always loved swimming and stuff like that. That was my big exercise. Well, remember uh, after World War One and Two, uh, uh, some soldiers went into shell shock. Oh yes. Oh. Well, there, there was a doctor <laughs> that thought these guys just need a little, so he threw them all in the pool and they <laughs> sunk like rocks. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, with with that whole thing, uh, we're we're gonna have to go here in a second. Um, uh, what was it? What was your question? Now I forgot it. 
See? Are you afraid of water? Are you, no, no. There was something after that. The about shell shock. About shell shock. Yeah, I had a guy. Uh, I, uh, it was the 4th of July, and I was blowing off firecrackers, as kids do, right? Mm-hmm. And I get a call from up the hill from a woman who we knew, and she said, would you stop blowing off those firecrackers? My husband is under the bed. Wow. <laughs> he had been in the war. He had been a, actually a war photographer, and he had shell shock. And it was... Holy yeah. Christ. Hey, listen, our time is up here. <laughs> But I, I or love, shell shock. I love talking to you. It's just you yeah, know. Me too. Let's look up at William Holden's death. <laughs> oh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Alex. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Our good friend, Larry Bubbles Brown, who joins us at least once a week. I love having him on. You know, even though he doesn't have video, uh, we just show that, uh, that little, this little thing here hey, of, of him. And that's it. That's about all we can do. Because he, is, he, doesn't, he doesn't have a computer with a camera or a high-speed Internet line into his house. He still has dial-up, okay? For those of you who have never heard us tell this story before, Dial up, ladies and gentlemen. Dial up. Anyway, um, if you want to call us, um, you can go over to uh, gabnet.net. And at gabnet.net, there's a little uh, um, uh, thing on the side that says uh, how you can call the program. And then it says uh, click here to call Zoom. And it will Zoom you to us. Okay? All right? Okay. And uh, there's not really much of anything you have to do in order to do that. You just uh, you just do it, you know. And uh, uh, you just click on that. And, f- and I don't think you even have to have Zoom installed on your computer. It will immediately put you onto our program. And we're always welcoming new callers. We have a we have regulars on this program, but we'd like to get some irregulars too. So. You know, I I thought to myself, a lot of times there are perfect opportunities for a joke. And I was listening to the interview that we did with Bubbles. And we were talking about what was the first memory you ever had. And it seemed to be traumatic. His was being bitten by his dog and me was drowning or or almost drowning. If I had drowned, I guess I wouldn't be here. Uh, But drowning. And uh, I said to him, I remember having bubbles all over my face. That was the feeling I had, was bubbles all over my face. And then I stopped to think. I was talking to Larry Bubbles Brown, so I, didn't ha- I, ha- I should have said I didn't have that bubble all over my face. But anyway, a lot of people trying to call in right now. Shall we take their calls? I think so. That would be nice of me to do. Okay? Here we go. As they start assembling, I'll let you see them assemble. There they are. Uh... Let's see here. Uh, oh, boy, what a group here. All of a sudden, uh, this is our, our, our citizen panel so far. Vernon Nunn's with us tonight. Jeffrey Stein's here. Trucker Steve's here. Alan's here. Dan Meyer is here. And Dr. Doom is here. Oh, you've even, everybody's making up signs now. It's the new oh. big thing on this program. <laughs> yeah. Thank God you all have printers. What does yours say? Move yours a little closer, Alan. We can't see it. Complete BS. BS. Yeah, you shouldn't do that in a serif uh, font. Because, see, uh, Charlie, hold yours up. A what? A serif font. font. Uh, Hold yours up, Charlie. That is sans serif. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. I'll. I'll That has no serif to it at all. I well, shot the Sarah. I'm not that well educated. Uh, not again. No, no, you see what? See when you hold yours up. See, see the kind of like the little little things that hang down from the T. And does this, uh, that's, does this show right? And to me, it's backwards. Well, that's because it. No, yes, it's fine. Mm, sure. uh, okay. uh, but do you know what a serif font is? No. Oh, okay. Well, non serif font doesn't have these. I don't know how to describe it. Like the little this is this is letters. what Charlie's holding up is not a serif font. It's sans serif. Okay. Meanwhile, what you held up, look at it. Do you see the difference? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a serif font. It's a little harder for us to read. Okay, so you need me to get it thicker. You know, I went through last night. I made a page. Mm -hmm. I laminated it. I put little pieces of cardboard behind it so I can... And and now it's on the wrong font. Well, it's okay. We can live with the font, okay? <laughs> but that holds up, see? And, of okay. course, we're being joined also by, let's see, Dan Meyer and also by uh, Josh Wheeler and, of course, the lovely and attractive Robert Natale. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. He looks like he's prepared with something tonight. Uh-huh. Was, oh, was Robert guy. You have to do this first, right? What? <laughs> Dr. Doom, of course. Let's go now to Dr. Doom. Where and is he? He's not. He's what not happened here. to him? Where'd he, he go? Well, you he just was, he, froze, he froze up. He's probably rebooting. Oh, oh no. no. Well, we'll wait. We can't start the show without the okay. death report. Well, let everybody do whatever you were going to do. We'll just wait here until he calls back. Hmm. <laughs> Makes for some port- pretty boring programming, doesn't Got it? Got a job. I don't know. I got hey, here time. I was thinking of something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Over the course of the day today, yeah. I was like maybe know. maybe some kind of fun for uh, the folks at home with. Uh, okay, Dan. Gabinet. Dan. What? Shut up, Charlie's yes. back. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my uh, internet went out for a second. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, Charlie, uh, do your Dr. Doom. See, he's got the sign up. All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we uh, lost another 2,530 <laughs> Americans today. What? How many? 2,530. Is That's going up, isn't it? Yeah, so that's twice what it was yesterday. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. yeah. They're all Republicans. We're okay. Hey, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's starting to happen again. You know, people thought, oh, it's just the coast is clear. We can open up. We, can you wait a couple of weeks to let the thing really settle? You know, but no, everybody's opening up. They've all gone crazy with it. We're opening up here in New York, the movie theaters. 100% open yeah. in Texas. 100% oh, you are open in Texas, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got I got reddish skin, and you are very red, Alex. I don't know my monitor going out now. I don't know. Am I red, folks? Am I particularly? Yeah, red? you're a little pink. Mm. I'm a little. On both of us. How do I, I look? Do I look okay? Here, you want me to do away with the pink? <laughs> Hold on a you second. You don't look pink, uh, Dan. You yeah. look fuchsia, Dan. Yeah, fuchsia. <laughs> okay, here. You want me to a little less pink? There Alex's we go. Alex's hat says he's red. There is a little less pink. How's that? There you go. That's uh, like a washed out pink. No, it's uh, I'm I don't. Know, I don't know what happened here, but my I'm, face I'm is very pink. Red. Wait a minute, my face is red and pink. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm flushed for some okay. reason. <laughs> Abbott sucks. How about Costello? On, he was <laughs> online to get a shot, though. I noticed. Yeah. He yeah. was probably oh, first in line. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, Abbott is your oh, yeah. Abbott, your uh, your uh, your governor. governor. Yeah, yeah, Mister Wheelchair. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let me see here. So get a job. Oh, get a job. I do got to get thicker. My my font has to be thicker, like Charles. Don't you don't you agree with me, Robert, that he should be using sans serif as opposed to serifed fonts? Yeah, I, I think I went out with her, actually. Yeah, right. Sarah Font? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back in high school. Yeah, yeah Sarah Font. Yeah. 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 What, what does that say? Yeah. Humor? Humor? Uh, uh, question two mark. Of us with humor. Uh, wait a minute. Humor. Yeah, humor. We've started a trend here. And people listening. We can turn off the volume. You know, I'm almost Just beginning to, I'm, I'm almost beginning to like those uh, background effects from Zoom again. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, no. Over. no. Oh, in what's that case. happening on this show? Anyway, no. um, um, <laughs> and then I, I had to uh, write uh, Dan Meyer a nasty note last night Ooh. because I yeah. got a note from Zoom specifically stating you. 
Oh, yeah, my, point in yeah. But I don't know, um, because it the the post when I posted what I posted, it got zero interactions. I don't know how well, because knew. nobody watches your Facebook page. But that's another story altogether. Right. Well, that's it was Twitter. <laughs> so what not happened? Facebook it was Twitter. Twitter. It was Twitter. And so, I but, but they, but for some reason, Zoom yeah. goes out there with their bots and is constantly looking for people who do what you did. Was you <laughs> posted my address for Zoom? Yeah, and they said. This person did that, and this could cause you a problem, and whatever, you know. What? So, this yeah, is Anthony. I, I guess, but could flood your lines or some because my Twitter feed is so popular. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's two weeks in a row. Yeah, but anyway, so what happened was, is they wrote me, and they they actually <laughs> did this your 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 Twitter feed. Yeah. Right. And saying that I should change everything and make sure that I have a new address and all this, that. Oh, and thing. they're like I'm, I hacked <laughs> yeah. your account. Yeah, and I and I just went, you know, I'm ready. I just basically my mind said fuck you to them. I don't care. Yeah, you know, if I see something, I, I mean, I took the tweet down because so what? But you know, I roll, I roll. That's a good one. I yeah. like that one. <laughs> okay, we got Kevin's joined us and Tony Anthony has joined us. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Tony, how, how are you? How's it going? Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, so anyway, uh, I noticed that Robert Natali <laughs> has some point? papers in his hand, which well, can only be some more lethal comedy for Mr. Well, Mr. Natali. Only, <laughs> only if our kind, generous, handsome, and talented host yes. um, decides yeah. <laughs> that maybe this is a dull spot in the program. I have a game prepared that mm -hmm. we could play. Oh, play. oh, a little game. Right. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. no, there's no better way to open up the program than yeah. with a good game. Absolutely. And you can take part if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. Um, and you can respond by just raising your hand if the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So mm -hmm. we're going to play Have We Ever. Have You Ever. Have You Ever. Have You Ever Stolen Something? Uh, well, okay. Ever All right. Let's, let's go. Does it count? Wait, wait. I have to. Well, wait a minute. Hold on, everybody. Everybody here has stolen something. Technically, yeah. Right? Like, for uh, instance, since, it, since you asked the question, Robert, let's start with you. What Have you uh, ever stolen something? I have. Yes. What? Yes. Yes. What? Oh, uh, well, back when I was a kid, I stole a candy bar, and I felt horrible for about a month. Uh-huh. Okay. Because <laughs> mine is similar, but I'll, I'll, I'll go last here. Jeff, well, have you ever stolen anything? Yes. <laughs> well, what was it? A, a car. What? A car? A car? Oh, he's he, okay. Oh, this is good. So oh, far, is a story. so far, yeah. he, so far, he's the winner. Yeah, yeah. 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 You I'm stole it. Did you actually, literally, steal a car? Oh yes. Yeah. Were you a kid at the time? Yes. No, that was last week. Last week. Yeah, right. <laughs> No, but you, I'm planning on another one. <laughs> were you a kid? Were you a kid at the time? Yeah, I was a kid. Uh, and were you caught? I was, I was. I had friends with me. You had friends with you, but were you caught? No. No. Oh, no jail time. But wow. well, actually, we got caught by the owner, and so we stopped the car mm -hmm. and got out and ran away. Okay. So the owner came out of the house and you guys were all in this car in the driveway. That's yeah. kind of semi theft, isn't it? Well, you know, we were half we driving there. it. And the owner didn't How old care. were you at the time? Joyriding. <clears throat> How old were you at the time? Hmm. I don't know. Teenager. Teenager. Consider the okay. statute of limitations okay. before you answer. Let me ask <laughs> let me ask you the other big question. Do you have a driver's license? I don't think I had a driver's did, license. Did you have your driver's license? I don't think so. No, okay. All right. Oh, that's pretty good. He's a felon. Yeah. Mm. That's a good one. So far, that's the best. Wow. Well, we've only had yeah. a couple so far, but let's see. Did Ver you? Vernon might be able to top him. Who I, knows? I, I wouldn't have picked you as the, the bad boy of the group. For, Vernon? Mm. Yeah. Vernon, did you ever steal anything? Uh, turn your mic on, Vernon. Uh, you don't have your mic on. There we go. That this week? Yeah. No, not no, this week. No. 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 Have you ever no. stolen anything? Have you ever Did stolen I steal anything this week? Yeah, I stole a Sharpie from work. Ah, oh, come on. You could do better than that. Stealing stuff from the office. 
like pens yeah. or pads or whatever. Everybody that doesn't does count. that. That doesn't I, count. I think that's pretty, pretty. So, okay. I had my car stolen last month sitting out no, in front of my it, house. It, it, no, yeah, really? Somebody it's else stole, stole my car. Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll to that. that isn't the question, though. You don't want me to give yeah. it back? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you, Jeff. Do you still have it? Car back. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else is going to be I stole Vernon's car. Hmm. Yeah. Let me see here. Um, um, uh, Trucker Steve, have you ever stolen anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, me and my brother got caught shoplifting. What'd you, um, what, what were you trying to shoplift? Uh, dinky cars from this toy store. Oh, I see. Were you kids at the time? Yeah, we were kids. Yeah. We got in trouble grounded. We were grounded for about three weeks, I think. Really? And you never <laughs> yeah. you never stole anything after that, right? Nope. You, you learned your lesson that crime does not pay. Nope. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I stole a candy bar when I was 14. And unlike, it sounds like Robert's parents were a little more strict since he was sore for, I don't know what he said for a month, but I was sore for a few hours because my father's leather belt against my ass uh, changed my idea of going and stealing a candy bar again. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you think, though, that mm -hmm. what was more severe, though, do you think, in criminal, him spanking you with a belt or you stealing something? Um, me stealing something. Really? Okay. Because yeah, I, I mean, the, the belt felt good, actually. Oh, well, we found out something else about you <laughs> without even that, asking. Yeah, that's that's another, another question whole new for another time. Conversation right there. Yep. All right. All right. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Charlie, you had something you want to say? Yes, Charlie, you had your hand up. Charlie. Yeah, you talked about which is worse. Yeah, I just had this memory when I was about eight years old of uh, my dad beating me with the belt, telling me, didn't I tell you not to hit your brother? As he's beating me with the belt. <laughs> now, Dan, did we did we already come to you yet? No. Uh, I when I was in college, there was a uh, time when um, it was like a week or so that I would walk down to the grocery store and steal packs of cigarettes. Okay. Yeah. As an adult. What's the statute of limitations in Ohio? Well, I don't know, but it was um, it was it was like I think I want to say it was like in the year nineteen ninety one, ninety two. Okay, get a lawyer. Now we we come <laughs> really we come to the greatest criminal on our panel, Josh Wheeler. <laughs> Josh, criminal mind. Do you ever steal anything? Uh, not not really. I'll, I'll oh, well, aren't we a goody-goody? Yeah. I'm not really a game player. <laughs> okay. All right. How about you? How, 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 uh, let me see. We, we we talked to Natalie. We, uh, Charlie, did we ask you? I already volunteered. No, I never. To my knowledge, my recollection, I've never stolen anything. Wow. I think, I think what Josh was saying is he's not going to incriminate himself on the show yeah yeah no i was saying that i'm going to sit here quietly until you guys decide you want to talk about something and when you do <laughs> let me know and i'll speak uh, okay all right. right this is the warm-up to the show josh mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're a little lightness next at the question beginning. uh wait a minute oh uh, sorry tony god i thought i was running you ever steal yeah, anything i must mm -hmm. confess yes i did two things actually what i actually made slugs uh, out of the shape of quarters and then I would go to the arcade. So instead of asking my mother for quarters or dollars to play Pac-Man or whatever, or Robotron, mm -hmm. I made them so good that I used to throw them in and it was the perfect weight. And when the guy used to, the guy came to take the quarters out on Wednesday mm -hmm. and the owner of the store saw like the slugs coming out, he said, you son of a bitches. He was kind of getting the idea because I would be able to play for like an hour. <laughs> he says, this is it. He, I didn't even <laughs> know it was me. Because if you got a high score for a week, you get like a free lunch. So we were doing it once. I was doing it quite often because they had a couple of games I wanted to play. Okay. And he's like, you know what? Come on. He couldn't really point us out. And I actually took the pinball machine. Right? I used to watch the guy fix it, Alex. Mm -hmm. And they had a pinball machine. If you actually, he showed me how to do the wires to get free credits. Mm -hmm. And when he was in the back, like stocking a thing, we'd go in the back and kind of like jimmy it. 
to get a few free credits. <laughs> but that you couldn't get busted with. Okay, you're yes. a little too excited over your criminality. Yeah. Yeah. I still yeah. Some money. Um, Kevin? Oh, Kevin's mm -hmm. doing something here. Uh, hey, Kevin? You're, yeah. You're up next. Ever steal anything? What'd I do? Did you ever steal anything? No, the only thing I stole was the... I voted for Joe Biden and I stole the election. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yeah, us 80 million people conspired to steal and the And finally, election. John Larkin, you ever steal anything, John? Yes, I did. I stole Abby Hoffman's book, Steal This Book. Now, he told you to do that. <laughs> well, I have to say, I have to say that book really influenced me as a young kid and kind of ruined my life. Well, having been a good friend of, of Abby's and knowing Abby quite well, uh, he was very happy when anybody stole that book. You know, yeah. I mean, he didn't but care that, that book influenced you, me and it kind of ruined my life. Yeah. It made me think that I could, you could go through life, uh, you know, literally living like he he advocated, which is not a good way to live. <laughs> I don't know that he was advocating to live that way. He but I was, mean, for a young kid, I was like 12 years old. When I read yeah. it, so kinda, um, <laughs> the only thing I ever stole that I can remember oh, sorry. is when I was a kid. Uh, they used to have the, remember the 45 records and they had the big oh, hole? Yeah. And then in order to play them on a normal spindle, you had to have one of those little things, yeah. fillers yeah, you the put in there. Yep. Well, in, in, in those days, we used to have these... Uh, these rooms you could go into at a, a listening booths at record stores where you could go in and listen to records. And they had one of those, and I wanted it, and I stole it. And that was the only thing I ever stole. And I can't tell you how guilty I felt about that. I mean, if you want to talk about the, uh, the polar opposite of stealing a car, it's stealing a 45 mm. RPM adapter. And yet I probably felt more guilt for that than Jeff felt for what he did. You know, yeah, right. Jeff kind of felt guilty for a minute or two, and then him and his friends went off and had a beer or something, yeah. laughed about it. Okay, so you have another question uh, you want? I've to got like on? thirty of them, but well, you know, well, save you them, save, save them for another, like. save them for another night. <laughs> well, you could do just yes or no real quick. Okay. Did you ever get kicked out of a bar? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jeff kicked out of a bar? No. No. Uh, uh, Vernon kicked out of a bar? No. Uh, Trucker Steve? No. I was going to just Alan? raise your hand for no. yes or no. This is getting pretty boring. Dan, have you ever been kicked out of a bar? Not not kicked out of the bar, but cut off, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, Josh? No. Okay. Uh, uh, Robert? I assume you have no. if you asked the question. You, oh, you have no. Robert, no, I thought we were going to raise our hand if we did. Instead yeah, no, of going I, around I, the room, oh, okay. I, no. I well, I I never got thrown out of a bar because I've hardly ever been in a bar. Okay, uh, Charlie, no, right? No, no. How about you, uh, Tony? You don't drink, do you? No, I, I only on occasion. I'm like you. I, it, 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 like a holiday or something, or dinner, then on something. Yeah, like, and Kevin, I don't playing video games. Kevin's yeah, gone because he just cool. got kicked out of the bar. And uh, mm -hmm. Larkin. Yeah, yeah, I did. Really? A couple of times. Really? What were you kicked out for? You just... uh, I can't think of one time. It was New Year's Eve, and it was closing time, and they were kicking everybody out, and I didn't want to get out. And for some reason, I was so drunk, I thought I could stay there all night, and I ended up <laughs> getting thrown out. <laughs> you felt you could move in, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They thought, hey, it's New Year's Eve. You don't close on New Year's Eve. And they go, like hell, we don't. <laughs> well, why don't you keep those questions, Robert? And, sure. And let's let's try them at the beginning of, of shows. Uh, you know, because sure. it's a it's a good way to it's a good icebreaker should, for a show. I think you should ask five questions, and if you did it, you raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Vernon. Yeah. Uh, you turn on your mic, Vernon. You got to turn on your mic. Yeah. All right. I got a Kev. I got a question for Kevin. When he stole the election for Biden, was he one of those dead voters? <laughs> 
You know, last uh, I don't know, know whatever you want to call it. <laughs> There's this guy Chuck Lorre who produces a lot of TV shows, uh, Big most Bang significant Theory. Big Bang Theory and yeah. Young Sheldon and so on. And at the end of every one of his shows, he has what he calls a uh, a vanity card, in which he it, sometimes it's a whole big, beautiful piece mm -hmm. of prose that he writes. Sometimes it's very short. And the one last night, if I can kind of paraphrase it, uh, said. Um, uh, if I'm dead um, uh, in 2024, uh, bury me in Pennsylvania uh, so I can still vote. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, that, he spent a lot of time on those little cards at the end of the episodes well, of the show. He spent a lot of them la in the last couple of years completely trashing Trump. And these all went on at the mm -hmm. end of a CBS show, but they're very quick mm -hmm. and they go on. Yeah, you have but to you freeze always, frame. You have to freeze frame. Yeah, you frame can it. freeze them and read them. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear uh, Rush Limbaugh did the uh, benediction at uh, Trump's inauguration yesterday? Yeah, heard <laughs> oh, how'd that go? <laughs> I heard it was really stiff. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but um bump. Good yeah. one. So you be yeah, 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 <laughs> Is shit holy? I, I what was that one you just held up, Alan? Oh, it, it was sarcastic. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I will remake these in a bigger yeah, form. Now, yes, was it yesterday that, uh, that I think it was the 4th, that we were supposed yeah. to uh, yeah. suddenly have people attacking right. the uh, the Capitol again? Trump was uh, inaugurated. Yeah, and, the and they... The inauguration day, yeah. They actually had people ready in case it happened. Yep. You know... Um, canceled Congress uh, they, for the day. They had yep. sessions, but well, they canceled it. We we didn't notice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and well, I I've I've heard that uh, I think there is some that actually believe that Trump is president and is wearing a Joe Biden mask. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Well, he's doing a good At job. Least he's wearing a mask. Uh, anything. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> anything's possible, you know. Uh, I, yeah. Right? I just, you know, I just, uh, um, uh, it's amazing. I, I don't know that if I were the government, I would have shut down like I did. Because what you're showing is that they can just by, by per, per, you know, saying like they're going to do something, cause you to close down. And that gives them a sense of power that they should not be allowed to have. Yes, Vernon. Yeah. What's not funny to me is the effect that Trumpism is having even today in state legislatures yeah. there are state mm. legislatures that are controlled by republicans and they are concentrating their limited days that they have in session doing things like restricting voting yep yeah, yeah they're putting yeah. in all kinds of fucking crazy laws in georgia for example they have reduced the mail-in voting the reasons that you could have that you could participate in mail-in voting mm -hmm. they have reduced the number of early voting days and they have completely eliminated voting on weekends and and they made it a crime to hand water to people who are waiting to vote yeah. oh that's not the worst of it in kentucky they have a bill pending that would make it a crime just to harass a police officer or talk back to them that would be a crime Hmm. Exercising your First Amendment rights would become a crime. Well, it, what's, what's happening here is that we, we, we've got a whole bunch of things going on that are just upsetting me greatly. Yes, Dan. Oh, um, oh, I thought you were going to say something, but what I was going to say is... Uh, I was going to say something, but I saw you uh, raised your hand. Uh, and I, I'm, well, I'm sorry. No, but anyway, but uh, there's a book that I read called It Was All a Lie. And this book was written, I forgot that Stuart somebody, he was a Republican, yeah. and he, I think you might have heard of the book. So anyway, yeah. he said, I mean, basically that book said, and, and he thought that Trump was going to win in 2020 because it was before the um, pandemic. Mm -hmm. But um, they did computer models. Legitimately, by demographics, Republicans cannot win legitimately anymore. It's yeah. just demographically, the math is not there. They have yeah. to do the suppression. They have to, if they were, in order to survive on a national level, they had to do that. Well, then, how it's, do they? How do they excuse what went on in the last election before this one? 
in which Trump didn't even get the most votes, but he won. Right. That's cheating, like you manipulating the electoral well, I mean, it's, college. It's a whole, it's a whole, like, it's a whole cue. The last four elections, or it, 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 it's the how whole. How many out of the last elections where the Republicans yeah. did not win the popular vote? It's the whole QAnon thing. You know? Yes, Alan. I will bet that that is going to be proven wrong, and I know nobody wants to hear this, but in 2022, I think the Republicans will take back the Senate, unfortunately. Well, the Senate's really close, and the Senate, and don't get me started on that. The Senate is. I don't want to get you started on anything. I don't want to get you started hold on back anything. a little bit. Let, yeah, let, you let don't want to. Disputing what your book said. Let other people I, say a few things here, Dan. Uh, no, um, so, d- uh, the Republicans d- are gerrymandering so bad all over <laughs> the country. Florida is going to have they're gerrymandering it, so they're going to ha- they're going to get two extra seats, and they're both going to be Republican seats. See, what, yeah. what seems incredulous to me is that after what happened with Trump and vis-a-vis the riots in the Capitol and so on, that the Republicans could get elected to dog catcher would be amazing to me. But people will still vote for them. Oh, yeah. And people yeah. will. It's st- because they, be- they believe the big lie. Yeah. yeah, trust me. Around here where I live, I got, <laughs> I got people in this area one bad decision away from being an insurrectionist and marching on the Capitol. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just the mentality around here. Just dumb redneck hillbillies. Yeah. (laughs) In Arizona, they're passing a law that that will allow the the Republicans to just throw out the vote, you know, the the, the electoral college Mm -hmm. and just elect their own, you know, president. That, so, see that what that's well, no, wait, that wait, is, wait, wait, this, is, this is where I, I would uh, uh, defer to Josh. Josh, can a state do that? Can a state say, here's how we're going to apportion out our electoral votes and make up their own rules? I mean, within some limits, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear exactly what he said about what they were proposing, but I mean, the states, trying, the trying states do decide. I'm that sorry, that says ahead. they're trying to pass a law that says they can throw out the votes in in a presidential election and just choose their own uh, you know electors and send their own electors into uh, you know choose their own president instead of the people. You know what I mean? Who so would like, get to do I, that? The um, legislature. The, the legislature. Legislature. The state, the state legislatures. I think the, state. the U.S. Constitution says the states choose their electors. Right. Yeah. 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 So the states choose. How they and choose how they, is up to them. How yeah. they do that is up to them. Right. Yeah. Right. It's horrible. That's why I think that now more than ever, the national popular vote interstate compact needs to become law in enough states so that it doesn't matter what Arizona does. It doesn't matter what Michigan or Wisconsin or Pennsylvania does. The fact of having swing stakes would be moot. Yeah. yeah. I agree with Charlie. It's an electoral college. <clears throat> we'll say it anyway. And the electoral college, see, you can't get rid of the electoral college without a, a constitutional amendment. Right. But yeah. you can make it irrelevant by mm. passing the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact because yeah. all that says is, if the popular vote nationally mm-hmm. favors one candidate, then my state will send delegates for that person. It doesn't matter what the candidate got in my state. It's the national popular vote that determines who I send my electors for. Yeah, and it, it, how many states do have to do that before it can... Uh... Yeah. You only need three more. In order, you only need three let me, more let me states. ask, Josh, in order to do away with the Electoral College altogether, it would have to be a, a constitutional amendment, would it have to be? Or how, how would they have to, how would they do that? Yeah, I mean, in order to write it out from the Constitution, basically, it would have to be a constitutional amendment. So it would take two-thirds of both houses of Congress and two-quarters of the state legislatures. Yeah. I mean, that's virtually impossible for... Yeah. Uh, yeah, a change of that magnitude. I mean, right. we obviously never have amendments. <laughs> we obviously have amendments often. You know, we, we've had twenty-seven. Uh, we haven't had one since maybe around eighty-eight, ninety, somewhere in that range. Uh, so we haven't had one in over thirty years. But 
I mean, I don't see one like that coming along and having any success. But the states do hold, you know, a lot of power in how they proportion their electoral votes and and how, how they're decided and cast and all that kind of stuff. There are a few states that have a few quirks in there, like Nebraska, two, two, Maine, two states, Maine, things like Nebraska that. And Maine. So there are workarounds for it, of course, that still fall within the boundaries of Republicanism and, and a democracy, you know, that I think are in bounds. Uh, you know, something like Arizona is proposing, if mm -hmm. that's true. That's sort of a, I'm not saying that it's not 100% constitutional, but it's also, it's kind of out of bounds in a lot of ways. And I think they would have a lot of trouble with that. Yeah. You know, I think it would probably get challenged to the Supreme Court if they passed a law that said that the state legislature could do that after having a law that says this is how we're going to select our electors and then they just say no nope, we're not going to do that we're going to pick them ourselves i think the supreme court would get a case on that mm -hmm. oh. Oh, so boy. one would hope yeah, well, yeah we'll see and then what will they do once they get it so <laughs> now another another subject i want to bring up is what's going on here in new york with cuomo anybody oh. anybody following this yeah, yeah. A little bit. Uh, yeah. You know, well, the only thing I've heard is that Cuomo's a real asshole. Well, he, yeah, he's he is an asshole, but he's our asshole. Yeah, he's you a know, pretty pretty good governor, though. He, he, you know, he look. I mean, I have to say this: he saved my life. Okay, plain and simple, by his actions, he saved my life and the lives of a lot of New Yorkers. Uh, he misreported some of the deaths. Yes, that's true, but that's not killing people. Right. Okay. Right. Um, they were already dead. They were already dead. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I just feel that he he saved my life by just uh, forcing people to close down and wear masks and closing down the subways and doing all the things that needed to be done. Things that weren't done in states like Texas, like Florida, where they went, oh, no masks. So we're going to see this thing through. You know, we'll reach. It'll be nothing worse than a bad cold, you know. And uh, it was it was time that uh, the, the people started realizing this guy did a pretty good job here, mm -hmm. and now they're trying to rob him of the um, of the um, uh, of the ability to legislate to get things done to help with the pandemic. So, it, you know, it's getting, and it's all, a lot of it has to do with these three women who I refer to as um, uh, Mary uh, Fuck Kill. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I, I listened to this one woman who did an interview on, technology, I... on CBS, and I'm going, what are you so bothered by? The fact that he said that he was uh, he's single and lonely and, uh, hey, does she, does she ever go out with older guys? And, uh, you know, I mean, what, where, where can you, can you even I don't do know. that How kind of thing that? to anybody How anymore? Was she, though? Huh? She was pretty young. What do you mean he was pretty young? It was two no, years she ago. She was pretty young. The oh, girl in the... She was pretty young. She was, she was 24. Yeah, how old? Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, my. look. You know, I mean, I went out with a lot of young girls in my lifetime, so I'm not yeah. going to, I'm not going to uh, besmirch somebody for I, doing that. I know, that. but you were never the governor of a state, so. Well, I mean, he I mean, maybe no. acted unjudiciously, but I mean, yeah. I don't think he did anything. He didn't. He didn't stick his finger somewhere. Okay. Oh. He didn't do anything untoward that way. It was he just purely verbal. Thought. Yes, uh, Jeff. I've gotten a real appointment with this problem. Mm -hmm. And that is my wife is absolutely sure that anybody who's got a job like that mm -hmm. should not be fooling around with the ladies in his office. Yeah, that was Oh, oh I, I, I agree. Listen, I had a rule... Yeah. This was 30 years ago, 40 years ago, that I would never have sex with somebody I worked with. 
you know. Well, it doesn't even have and, to be. And there wasn't yeah, the Me Too movement or anything like that back then. But and and if I if I had somebody, and then later on I had people that work with me. I had a, a newswoman. I had female producers. Never once did I come on to any of them. In fact, if I did want to come on to them, that all stopped the day they started working with me, you know, because I valued my relationship to them as co-workers more than I did as something to make my dick feel good. But, you know, I mean, that was me. But uh, I don't think that what he did was that terrible is what I'm saying. It was stupid, Okay, I'll grant you that. But, you know, they, for every woman like this that went, oh, I was so upset by what went on, there's another one that went back to their girlfriends and went, guess who came on to me today? You know? So uh, I know, but a young woman yeah. today is going to, you know, they... No, you know, but no, you know what, you, what you've got is you've sweating. got women out there who are waiting for the perfect opportunity to either get publicity or get a few bucks by suing or by being compensated, whatever. Uh, and and this none right. of this, you know, what we've done is we have, we have cheapened what this whole thing is about. We went from date rape with Bill Cosby... To asking if you date an older man by uh, by by Mario by Andrew Cuomo, and giving the same weight to both of them. No. Oh. Uh, yes, we do. We give the same weight to both of them these days, and 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 he didn't do anything that even approaches what all these other people were accused of. You know? Yeah, nobody's nobody's saying that Mario uh, that uh, Andrew Cuomo committed a crime. Well, but, I mean, but, but but what they're trying to do is they're trying to take his ability to to uh, uh, take care of this state and deal with the COVID crisis and so on. They're trying to I, take that ability away from him. Well, that could be. I don't know. I don't know the story of of these women if they're legitimate or not. Let's let's say they no uh, let's say they are legitimate. Let's say they're one hundred percent legitimate, and everything they said is absolutely right. true. None yeah. of it comes to the to the to, to the uh, uh, level of being actionable. Okay, like having to resign. Yeah, I would I would say that, and I and I heard the apology, and I I think his apology was was reasonable, but then again, it's not my call to make. Yeah. It's like I'm not, you know, and well, it's definitely not because I'm not in New York. So well, nobody's asking you to make the yeah. call. Yeah. Well, you just did, so yeah. Or you just were quiet, and I filled in the. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, I just, I just, but I think the, the also. What's bothering me is, and I hate the term "cancel culture," but it's the term that's being used now by uh, Republicans mostly. By yeah. Republicans, but. Uh, the people, a lot of the people who are involving themselves in cancel culture are Democrats, are liberals, who are suddenly bothered by, you know, gone with the wind. Or gone, Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. That was not any liberal. That was the Dr. Seuss family. The, well, who, what fa whose family? Dr. Seuss's family made that decision. There were no liberals climbing yeah. the family well, for that. It wasn't Biden. I don't think, yeah. you know, I don't think it was the Seuss family that brought yes. it up. Yes, yes it, it, was. Was. it was. Google it. It, it was the Seuss trust. family. I think he yes. made fun of the Chinese people in the book. No, but he, he, he in fact, he changed that. He did? Yeah. He, he drew the Chinese person and painted him in yellow. And oh. then a couple of years later, and he took yellow. away the yellow pigmentation so oh. that it wouldn't be racist. Okay? No. Uh, mm. uh, but I mean, I just you know I'm I'm just finding that uh, uh, for instance they were doing a th doing a thing on TCM right now about films and having to look at them in the framework of today, mm -hmm. and the one the first one they did was Gone with the Wind, uh, and pretty much the people there agreed one was a black woman and one was a white guy and then there was a white host. And uh, they both, they all kind of agreed that Gone with the Wind has to be taken as an anachronism, as something that was done back then. 
Yeah. That was the most popular movie of all time, the most successful movie of all time, still remains such. Yeah. And that it should just be looked at in the prism of 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 time. Historical, and, and, yeah, just and, a and say we, film. you know, I mean, uh, if, if they were bringing up the fact that while you could say how terrible it was that these black actors were playing mammies and things like that, they were also black actors who were being hired in Hollywood to play very major roles. Something right. that they weren't given the opportunity up until that point to do. Hattie mm -hmm. McDaniel, in fact, was the first woman ever to win an Academy Award, a black person to win an Academy Award uh, for Best Supporting Actress. So, you know, we have to just put it in that light and say, okay, we watched this, we know that it makes the Confederacy look better than it really was, it doesn't look, give slavery as bad an uh, image as it should have, and... Um, um, you know, Malcolm X, they, they quoted Malcolm X as saying that when he was a kid, he went to see Gone with the Wind. And whenever he saw Butterfly McQueen in that picture, he wanted to crawl under the carpet. He said it just made him cringe so badly. And I understand that because he, there she was. I don't know nothing about birth and babies, Miss Scarlet, you know, that kind of thing. But nevertheless, uh, Butterfly McQueen was playing a a cartoon role. She was playing a comic role. Um, she was the comic relief in the picture. And she was a very fine actress. And to see her be besmirched by all of this, and Hattie McDaniel to be besmirched, and a whole bunch of other black actors who were in this picture, that what they said is it should just be looked at under the prism of time and taken and, and explained to people and yeah. taken that way. Yeah. Called birth I, of a nation. Hmm? Oh, yeah, birth of a nation. That's the perfect. Well, example. birth of a nation yeah. is uh, it was actually a pro Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan film. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, but it was like the first major uh, big money making blockbuster of all time. That's really. correct. The, the president of the country screened it in at yeah. the White House. Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, but nevertheless. Um, it, it is a very important film in the pantheon of motion pictures. Sure. And yet, so, oh, do yeah. we, do, sure. so do we not show it for that reason? Or do we just say, this was done at a time when people were just very naive about this sort of thing? Yeah, well, yeah it's a, it's, it's a, um, you know, a, a well-regarded film in the film, you know, film society. And just like, uh, you know, Will to Power or whatever uh, the Nazi Remember what all the Nazi ladies? Oh, made right. Films? Yeah, those propaganda um, movies. Benny Riefenstahl or whatever. Yeah. I mean, those movies are, are like, you know, they show those movies in college film classes, but I wouldn't want to watch that shit. I mean, I've seen Oh, I mean, uh, well, uh, Lenny Riefenstahl's uh, Triumph of the Will is Triumph one of the, the greatest world. pieces of propaganda ever done. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, and it was, it was beautifully done. No, they were, you she know. Was a, Excellent filmmaker. Do you ever see but, it, uh, Josh? Ever see uh, Triumph of the Will? The, no. The pro Hitler movie? Um, no, I have not. Yeah. She, she was. Hard to sit through. <laughs> what? It's hard to sit through, you know what I mean? Well, I, mean, I, don't, know, I don't know if it's that hard to sit through. It's it's just, I'm whenever I see it, I kind of gasp at just yeah. the, the, the magnitude of the scenes. Yeah. No. You know, the staging of these rallies. I believe this rally was, where was it? I'm trying to remember where it was, which rally it was, but it was one of their major... Nuremberg? No, it wasn't Nuremberg. It was one... Uh, I'm trying to remember now. But it, it was, a, a, you know, it, 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 pretty terrific. Berlin? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, I, if I, I'll go look it up. And, like yeah. a Trump rally, right? No. Yeah. Well... <laughs> uh, and Trump's were, were, were small by comparison. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. I just had to bring Trump's name in there. I mean, uh, these Dave were Reynolds. these were uh, literally calculated attempts at winning people over, you know, and the, the sheer magnitude of them was was unbelievable. Yes, uh, Alan. So the last couple of sentences you were talking about Trump, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, they, they apply to Trump too. 
Well, yeah, uh, I saw a documentary on Goebbels recently, who was Trump's PR guy. You could call him that. <laughs> and what he did, uh, uh, what he did, was he had uh, him go to rallies. Hitler show up at rallies in an airplane, which at that time was high tech. That was the newest shiny penny, right? right? <laughs> and he would fly into the rallies fly the plane right into the rallies and then get off the plane and walk up to the podium and start speaking. A couple of, about, uh, oh, what was it, October, I watched a Trump rally in which Air Force One pulls up right behind the podium. He did that all he the time. Gets, he, get, yeah, he gets off the plane and he gives a speech. And I'm going, I wonder where he got that idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, well, Hitler climbed out of a Messerschmitt a lot of times. Right? No, I don't know. no, they weren't Messerschmitts. They were, they, they were little, little... If I wasn't know. around then, I'll have to take your word for yeah, it. No, no, absolutely. I mean, it was just amazing. So is, is Trucker Steve tucking himself in for the night? God, he's making me tired. Hey, I want to go to... I wanna <laughs> Sorry. Go to, uh, huh? so I had a long, long day. day. Yeah, had a long day. Up there, bet. What? I said it's probably cold up there. Where are you? Where are you right now? Steve? Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh, man, oh, I thought we were going to try and guess. And how cold is oh, it right no. now outside? Oh, it's not that bad. It's um, um, it reached a high about seven Celsius today. Oh. Um, That's... I went through Nebraska and it was seventy degrees. Oh wow. Yesterday, what wow. now? What do you do for heat when you're out? When you're parked out, you don't keep the engine going, do you? Either I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. Sometimes I do. You I. You know, sometimes the bunk heater won't fire up. Oh, I see. Okay. The They're a pain in the ass. Yeah, and what kind of heat is the bunk heater? How much is it? Is it use gas or does it use oil or? Uh, it uses a little bit of the diesel, but it runs. Um, uh, uses a lot of battery power, so it it only has only lasts about for ten hours. Oh, okay. Oh. And then you have to, to fire up. Wow. Okay, I was wondering mm. about that. The truck. So, Robert, what do you think about that? Kevin's probably? Yeah. Kevin was a truck driver. He's probably used bunk heaters before. Yeah. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, Robert, what, 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 this whole thing with cancel culture, how do you feel about it? I mean, where, where do we place this stuff, you know? Well, I, when are we going to get reasonable about this and not say, oh, we got to cancel this and we got to cancel that because it's not right? And, you know, hold on, Dan. Uh, yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer for you. I just don't. I, I know, though, that um, – I don't feel the way you do about it being immediately connected to greater crimes. I, I think that's all in the eye of whoever it is that wants to complain, you know, yeah. all in the eye of that, the person that's doing the reporting. Yeah. Um, do I think Cuomo is inappropriate? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think his crime reaches the level of some of the things that you mentioned? Yeah. No, I, I don't. Okay. But I don't know who's making that comparison um, yeah. exactly. Well, they, you know, but they're putting so much, they're putting the same kind of weight to it. Well, it's the story of the day. There's not much else going on. I mean, they can only report COVID deaths so much. Yeah. Um, you know, there's not much else going on. Biden's kind of calmed the waters as far as you don't have to read fucking tweets every day and yeah. that sort of thing. So, so do you think, do you think that given, uh, it, it, given the the zeitgeist, the tempo of the times, that were this in another time of the year, like let's say last year, Cuomo wouldn't be the main story and it wouldn't be as heavy a story? I don't know that it would have been a story 10 years ago, honestly. Oh, that we know it wouldn't have been a story 10 years ago. I think that times are changing, and I'm not so sure it's not for the better. Yes. Again, we talked about this the other night. Do I think the pendulum will swing too far the other way? Yeah, probably, because that's the way generally justice gets done, you know, is that we become conscious of wrongdoing. And so we become, you know, maybe fanatical maybe, about it in order to swing things back yeah. to some happy medium. 
Okay. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. it's just an opinion. Yeah. I don't have well, an answer. Kevin, well, Kevin, uh, you know, uh, Robert and I live out here, so we're very close to this story. But when you sit out there in California, are you paying any attention to that story? Not a lot. Yeah. Matter of fact, today I was kind of just going, who really cares? The only thing that's bad about it is the fact that he didn't report it. And it was partially covered up. You mean the uh, the uh, deaths in the in the in the uh, no the oh. fact that he they that 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 she reported it and oh, they okay. didn't and they didn't yeah. yeah yeah that's what looks bad I mean you know well let, let's say you were let's say you were the person she came to and she told you essentially the story she's telling right now would you think that amounted to being very serious if I was a boss yes. Yes. I mean, okay. you, I don't, these sort of kind of things you, you'd have to treat it that way. I mean, listen, I work in middle management for one of the largest companies in the yep. world. Mm -hmm. And if someone came to me and said that, mm -hmm. it is my duty to say to that person, you need to understand before you say anything else that it will be my duty to report this and I will have to say something. I've been in that situation. I, mean, I, I will have no choice. So if you would like to talk about it, we can talk about it. But you have to know that as soon as we're done, I have to go and do certain things and I will have to write down everything that you said mm -hmm. and everything that I said to you. And it will have to go into the hopper and it will have to get taken care of. And for a government office as large as the state of New York to not understand something like that, <laughs> you know, I find that difficult. I mean, if you like Cuomo personally, that's perfectly fine. I don't have a judgment on that because that's a person's own you know right mm -hmm. to do so but you take you know the falsification of official reports you know pressure brought to bear cover up even if it's tiny or teeny weeny combined with what is now looking like to be obvious you know what would be obvious sexual harassment in today's workplace and he has to be aware of that if he's not then he's just an idiot Mm -hmm. You take yeah. all of that and you add it up, he's kind of a sleazy person. Now, yeah. should he be required to resign? I would say no. And the reason I would say no is because we didn't make fucking Trump quit and we didn't make any of these other assholes on the other side quit. So he can stay and the voters can decide, and that's fine. Would I vote for him? No. no. And what I don't like is I don't like some people on the left acting like it's not a big deal because... If it were a different mm. guy, if this were Trump doing this, they would be upset. Oh, he's yep. not qualified to be president. Well, exactly. Then I, I've been consistent the whole time. I just said Cuomo is not qualified to be the governor of New York. And if he were running today to be the governor of Ohio, I would not vote for him. In fact, yeah. I would vote for fucking John Kasich before I would vote. Well, for him. he's going for. And I don't it, like yeah, John Kasich. Yeah, he's going for a fourth term next year. Uh, and oh. I hope he doesn't get elected. And the reason I hope he doesn't That's get fair. elected is I don't think anybody should have four terms as governor. I, I think they get um, they, they get to feel after the second term, they get to feel that they have some kind of a uh, God given. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, like in a place where so, I work, if someone comes up to me and says, hey, man. So and so called me a, a, a retarded dipshit today and it made me feel completely uncomfortable. And I don't report that. And like yeah. six months later, this thing has all gotten blown out of proportion. It's there was a you, loss. Well, tonight when when I get, it, fired. Right? I get fired, exactly. Uh, again, exactly. they were doing the interview with her on CBS, and they ran more of it. And she said that she told them at the time that she really didn't want to do anything about it because, quite frankly, she didn't want to make any trouble or whatever. And then I'm going. I'm saying to myself, then why are you doing this now? Why? Why suddenly? I don't. Yeah, because you, yeah, but exactly, Vernon. The yeah, atmosphere money. has changed. You know, back then she was right, and when she says she didn't want to make trouble, maybe we're all misinterpreting that, and she means she didn't want to make trouble for herself. Because in a lot of cases, you bring the shit that down wasn't, on that you. That wasn't that wasn't the way she put it. She put and it this is this is exactly what the investigation will bring out. Yeah. yeah. Right. So right. that's yeah. what we can't well, jump to a conclusion. The the, on. The, the, the the sum total of all of this is is that he then said in his speech yesterday, he said, "Let the attorney general look at this and wait 
to make an opinion until that happens. Give me yeah, that much, which I think is much. fair. I don't think yeah. anybody would disagree with that. You just said as much, Kevin. Uh, and uh, and yet we then went right back to MSNBC's and, uh, on screen people. It was, I think it was Todd, what's his name, mm. who does Meet the Press. Uh, and and immediately, hard, immediately they're going, well, I don't believe him. And, uh, you know, so yeah. they, and he did this and he did that. And all he did was ask, look, just wait for the report to come in. You know, that's what this is for. Yeah. yeah that's, well, that's, 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 what they and did. that's exactly what I did. Yes. Hello, Brian. Where have you been tonight? Do you have an, do you have a uh, excuse? Yeah. Okay, bowl <laughs> And well, I did peach tea, but it's milk tea. Did no, you bring I enough for the whole over. class? Yeah. yeah. Did you bring enough <laughs> for the rest of us? Have you ever stolen yeah. anything? Yeah. Let's, yeah, ask, we let's ask the one other person here in New York, uh, uh, Tony. What do you think of the whole thing that's going on with Cuomo now? You know, I tell you the truth. He, I, I don't like it because I don't like that he didn't. The one thing I don't like is he. I think he's abusing his power, and I don't like the idea that he hid those numbers with the people who died. I mean, just be honest. Well, he just said he didn't hide those numbers, that these these were numbers that were given to him by the hospitals, that the hospitals reported those deaths of the people from the nursing homes as hospital I don't, deaths. I don't believe it. Well, I mean, I mean I, that's I, I what he's... I get a lot of that. Yeah. I'm just saying, if this were Chris Christie, you guys' fucking heads would just be poof. Yeah. I mean, you know... <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be able to. Uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's that's all I'm saying. Okay, I mean, I, I've been you're right. If it, if it was Trump, this, the story would be over in one day. You know, it'd be like, what else? You know, and and and, and, I, and listen, I'm I'm not on Team Chris Christie. You know, I mean, I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah, I mean it's it's all partisan, unfortunately. That's just how it is. Alan. Sadly enough. And you know, it's another thing that was making me get like pissed off, really. When the, that guy, uh, not to change the subject, where they were voting on the stimulus package, and the uh, Ron Johnson, he made them read every page. Yep. Oh, yeah. What a dick! What a waste of time. <laughs> I mean, what? This is what we have working for us. Yes. Yeah, so go to sleep. Really people, nice people are waiting and for their checks, time, and he's holding it up because yeah. Alan, 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 Alan's Alan. got his hand up, Alan. So I agree with Robert. She may not have wanted to bring this up earlier. Mm -hmm. Robert made my point for me. And um, Coma wants to hear from the the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. Are they golfing buddies? Are they on the same party? Well, he was I would be. I would she, be she, does, she doesn't play golf. No. The Attorney General is a female. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that. Okay. How close She's are you? He's also black. I don't know if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, well, to begin with, in New York State, I believe the Attorney General is an elected position, so she doesn't owe any. She doesn't owe. So is Mike Pence. You know, I mean, no, but what I'm, yeah, but he ran with Trump. Uh, yeah, right, but it's the same ticket. All I'm saying is, it's a female Attorney General, which at least makes it a little more objective. Okay, it's I not the same. That. It's not, it's not the, the same, same ticket. ticket. In it's not the same well, ticket gonna, in most what, states. What, what, what can I do to get you into this automobile? Okay. What can I it do? Isn't, huh? It isn't the same ticket, but you and I, Vernon, know that people go in and they and they go like, like they go like so, you know, like straight down the line. Yeah, Theoretically, but, but you could I don't have voted understand. for Cuomo and the Republican attorney general, yes. As a matter of that fact, that, that's happened. Do. The last two gubernatorial elections in Kentucky, okay. Yeah. The last one, a Democrat was elected governor and a Republican was elected attorney general and a Republican was elected secretary of state and a Republican was elected as the auditor. The election right before that, they were just flipped. A Republican was governor and Democrats had all the others. So what and that doesn't make any sense. Somewhat purple. And in New York, it's not close to purple. In New York, people vote Democratic Party line. Yeah, but so I don't think I don't think she's going to feel that she owes uh, Cuomo anything. And on top of that, you know, I mean, I I think Cuomo's probably a dick. I wouldn't want to have to deal with him. If he, I wouldn't want him mad at me. Okay, I would make your life hell. What you, you what, what power does she have if she says that he's guilty? Of well, what you know, what she's going to do is she's going to come out with a report of what they found. 
Yeah. Okay. okay. And if they found that these women are creditable and that they were uh, definitely hit upon, mm -hmm. they will come out and say that. I think I think he's also asking them to look into the nursing home situation too. To that question as That's well. That's kind of old news, though. No, it's not old news. That's the thing that probably is more damning. Yeah, people. really. Yeah. That's the more damaging thing. The, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing I think they're talking about in relationship yeah. to closing down his powers so over, over the wait a minute, uh, his powers right. over the pandemic. That's what they're having the discussions about is to limit his powers in that respect. So, can they do that? Yes, they can. Sure. sure. Okay. That's what I, I don't sure, know. Sure, they can. They can. They can. Different. They can limit his power to create executive orders. Okay. Okay. Which is how he's really been handling this whole thing all along. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it's it's uh, but I mean, it's a real th a horrible thing going on here in the state of New York because I think he's starting to make decisions now based on trying to make everybody happy. Like oh, yeah. opening it's up the movie the theaters and opening up the restaurants to th is thirty five percent, and you know, and on top of that, the deaths are going up again. The uh, a lot of the f factors are going up again, simply because he's doing all these things that kind of keep people happy, you know, get a little shiny penny to keep everybody's attention somewhere else. Yes, Dan. Uh, the same thing happened here in Ohio. Uh, Mike DeWine started out on top of it. You know, it was going fantastic. He was really doing the right thing. He it was we closed the schools pretty early and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But then all of a sudden, the people started doing the little protests outside, and and then the health director Amy Acton got protesters outside of her home mm -hmm. where her family is harassing her family and then uh she resigned yeah. and then since then dewine has pulled back and he's yeah. kind of playing ball with the right-wing assholes now by the way uh somebody writes here on our chat room trucker steve you look bored playing with a fork and yawning jeez man turn off the camera if you're that out of it no i kind of <laughs> like it it's kind of i think it's it's relaxing, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. What? What'd you say? I'm tired. I'm tired. I know he's he's very tired. He had a rough day today. <laughs> and, and and as a point of clarification, as a New Jersey resident, if I'd have found out Chris Christie was trying to hit on women, I would have said, "Is he fucking kidding me?" <laughs> <laughs> no. My first reaction. Who's he trying to I, kid himself? Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> You Are know, you I mean, at least, man? at least Cuomo isn't a half bad looking guy, even if he's an <laughs> older guy, you know, uh, he <laughs> looks like a sleaze ball to me. He looks to me, uh, to my Western mind, he looks like a guy from Central Casting playing a mob character in a movie. Well, that that, that he definitely could play a mobster in a movie. There's no question yeah. about that. But then we're it <laughs> might ten, be his next job. It might be his next job. Right. <laughs> Anyway, hey, let me, let me put some music on here. Some theme music. Hey, it's great. It's been fun. Jeff, how you doing? You okay tonight? Great. Great. You are great. Terrific. Uh, Vernon Nunn, always great. Great to have you here. Trucker Steve, you just look so relaxed, and that's the way I'm going to be in just about an hour from right now. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, Mr. Meyer. Uh, thank you, uh, Josh. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Robert Natali. Thank you to Charlie Wallace. Thank you to Tony. Tony, always great having you here. Uh, uh, Kevin, uh, great seeing you tonight uh, as uh, with uh, John Larkin. And for a brief but important appearance on tonight's program, Brian Neary. Thank you so much, Brian. Hey, why don't all of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, and we'll uh, call it quits. Thank you. You've been terrific. Okay, great bunch of people tonight. This is terrific. Good, good show. And uh, uh, that's about it, actually. That's about all she wrote for tonight. In fact, that's all she wrote for the week. We'll be here on Monday at 4 o'clock where we do our little pop-up show. And then we'll be back again here on um, Tuesday at 10.30 Eastern Standard Time uh, with another edition of The Ramble. Same time, same station in life. 
And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. <laughs> yes. And uh, by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask. Good night, everybody. Yeah.